What's up everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Nathaniel Morton and recently I did a video reviewing Knees Over Toes Guy and I let you guys know that I am 100% on board with the Knees Over Toes revolution because when we play sports, especially basketball, we are going to get into positions where our knees are going past our toes. So instead of avoiding those positions when we train and not allowing our knees to go past our toes, we need to train in the positions of our knees going past our toes so that when our knees go past our toes during basketball, because they will, we are strong and safe in those positions. Today, ladies and gentlemen, is a special, special day because this video is a collaboration, a remote collaboration, between myself and the one and only Ben Patrick, AKA Knees Over Toes Guy, the GOAT. The way that this video is going to be set up is in four parts, okay? Part number one is going to be me teaching you my exercise for strong knees in a higher vertical jump. Part number two is going to be knees over toes guy teaching myself and all of you his exercise for strong knees in a higher vertical jump. Part number three is going to be knees over toes guy trying my exercise. And then part number four will be me trying knees over toes guys exercise. So all of us are getting value. I'm teaching him, he's teaching me, we're teaching you, you're teaching us. Let's all get value from this and get healthy knees, strong knees, and a monster vertical jump. Let's go. All right, guys, so the one exercise that I'm going to choose out of all of the exercises on the entire planet to get strong knees and a monster vertical jump is single leg heel elevated squats, okay? And there's two reasons. Reason number one is because you can take this exercise and you can regress it all the way back to the point where if you have patella tendinopathy, if you have jumper's knee, you can take it all the way back and begin to get yourself strong. And I'll teach you how to do that in a second. And then you can progress it all the way to the point where it will give you that monster vertical jump that all athletes are looking for. And the second reason is because Heel elevated eccentric squats are shown as one of the best exercises to heal patella tendon pain and get your knees strong. So there's two important points to that. Heel elevated squats are shown to be better than normal squats. And slow eccentric squats are shown to be better than normal speed squats. Okay, so you have to understand that your tendons love eccentrics. They love isometrics. They don't necessarily love fast concentrics, but we need the fast concentrics to get a higher vertical jump. So you have to do eccentrics first, teach your tendons to be strong, then get into the fast concentrics and that rate of force development that will give you that higher vertical jump. So let me show you how to regress this and then properly progressive overload this to the point where it gives you that vertical jump that you want. So first off, instead of using one leg, you're going to use two legs. Let's imagine that you have the worst knees on the planet. Knees over toes guy, myself. We once had terrible, terrible patella tendinopathy, terrible knees. So if I was in that stage where I can't even walk up and down stairs without pain, I can't even stand up off of the toilet without pain in my knees. If I'm at that place, I'm not going to go all the way down. I'm only going to go down a few inches, okay? A few inches, never work through pain. Okay, once you can go down a few inches, then start to go a little bit more and a little bit more each time. Once you can go all the way down, what I want you to do is use chairs or use a railing or use something else that allows you to do the eccentric portion of the exercise, but then use your arms to help you up so that you don't do that concentric part because that's the part that hurts our knees. So three sets of 10, of eccentric double leg slant board squats. So once your knees are strong enough to do the eccentric portion and then help yourself up, then you move into doing the eccentric portion and the concentric portion, okay? You wanna go slow at first, and then after that, you can start to add weight to load your patella tendons. So then you can grab some dumbbells and you can slowly begin to load your tendons because with your heels elevated, you're specifically targeting the patellar tendon. Then, after that, then you get into single leg and you go the same way. You only do a few inches, okay? After you do a few inches and it's okay, then you get into going all the way down and you help yourself back up. Then you get into doing the full rep 
And then you get into doing the full rep with weights and you begin to load yourself from there. So that is how to heal your knees and then there's only one step further to take this to getting a monster vertical jump and that is this. It's all about rate of force development when it comes to getting a higher vertical jump. There's two things you need, strength and rate of force development. How hard can you press into the ground? How fast can you press into the ground to get an equal and opposite reaction into the air? And you can do that by strengthening your tendons and improving your rate of force development with these single leg slam forward squats. So you start by going slow, and then once you get there, you can start to go faster and faster on the concentric. So start to go up faster. And it's by going up faster and faster that you will increase your rate of force development and send your vertical jump through the roof. What's up YouTube fam? When I saw Nathaniel review ATG on YouTube, I thought, you know what? We actually have a lot in common. And my philosophy is that for you, the viewer, if you see what we have in common, your knowledge will expand more rather than having to pick sides and close your mind off. So I sent him my split squat tutorial. He sent me a single leg squat progression. So apologies if I do anything wrong on his squat progression. I'm copying his. You'll wanna watch his form video for this. So we both love using a slam board to get full range. And the way he does it is once it gets easy with your body weight, you start adding weights to this. So we both agree on this exercise to get full range. Now, I progress into an ATG split squat, which means the back knee doesn't touch the floor, the front hamstrings cover the calves. You start by progressing it this way to get that full knee bend, and then as the weights get heavier, it actually becomes like a direct ankle stretch right there, and you see the hip flexor stretch, torso upright. His similarly progresses to single leg full bend, and then adds weight, so he's going here with it. <clears throat> and so you can see there's two, there can be different paths to the top of a mountain. <clears throat> okay, so I did ATG split squat to get there. He did the single leg squat progression to get there. Now I hope you win even more by seeing what we have in common rather than seeing us fight. Why the ATG split squat? Well, the evidence is that full bend knees like those of Olympic weightlifters have 37% thicker tendons, more stable knees and less chance of knee injury compared to guys in sports like basketball where we don't do full bend. The best in the world at this is the Chinese Olympic weightlifting team, meaning they're number one in the world. Like the US is not even in the top 20. So empirically, they have more of this muscle. Let's get down here. This muscle, the VMO, empirically the Chinese are known for that muscle. We'll come back up here. So the Chinese even uh, elevate your heels on squats. If you complain to your coach that you're having knee pain, so you get even more bend to handle knee pain and getting that full bend is actually now proven to emphasize the VMO more. It was once thought you couldn't prioritize the VMO. The first problem becomes how do you get started? Because the Chinese start when they're kids. So what if you have pre-existing pain and if you play sports, we pick right or left. So our body twists in certain ways. We put tons force more in one side or the other. So what if you have imbalances and pre-existing pain and now you're trying to do a deep squat and if there's weight on your back and you didn't grow up with that full bend, your hips are gonna be stronger than your knees so these three factors give you a huge problem. Well, here's what's awesome. There was another study done that proves that traditional split squats give you the same speed, agility, strength results as traditional squats. So the solution, put it together for a full bend split squat. This is an exercise that has never been tested. We're talking about a full bend, letting your heel come up so that you get that maximum range of motion. This is done to a base of 25% of your weight each hand. <laughs> being pain-free and easy at full bend. As a bonus, your back hip flexors get really flexible. So with our other knee ability exercises alone, you get to a full split. Now the next logical problem becomes, what about the torso gains of squats? Well, the answer is simple. A similar full range of motion, seated, good morning. You simply build your seated good morning at the same one-to-one -one ratio as your ATG split squat. 
Neither of these have ever been tested, but empirically I have more actual pain success stories than any other coach. And I've safely built athletes to 100% of their weight in additional load, at which point there have been no outliers. Everyone had an absolute transformation of speed and jumping while becoming freakishly injury proof. Safest loading is through dumbbells because if you get into trouble, you can let them go. You can even use a barbell, but it's safer bar on front in case you fail. Your goal is flat ground, full hamstring coverage of the calf without the back knee touching the floor and the torso perfectly straight. But you can elevate your front foot to make the flexibility a little bit easier as you're opening up your hip flexors. Always perform the first set without additional weight. Then gradually add weight each set. The knee ability standard is to comfortably, pain-free, full range of motion handle half your body weight. So that means 25% of your body weight per dumbbell. Once you've got the base standard of 25% of your weight each hand, pain-free and easy, one option is to begin barbell loading at half body weight, but now working on keeping the heel down for world-class ankle mobility. If you're gonna load more than half your weight, I recommend wearing Olympic weightlifting shoes. And I don't advise loading more than your full body weight and additional load. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and try out these ATG split squats, but then stay tuned because at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to take the ATG split squat and the one leg squat on a slanted board, and I'm going to show you how to actually take action on it and how to implement it into your own workout schedule so that you too can get strong knees in a higher vertical jump. But let's go ahead and try it out. So guys, the reason that myself and Knees Over Toes guy chose ATG split squats and single leg squats on a slanted board is because we wanted to choose something that we had in common. Believe it or not, myself, Knees Over Toes guy, and all of you, we all share common goals. We all want stronger knees. Nobody wants patellar tendonitis, nobody wants jumper's knee, nobody wants pain in their knees, and we all want a higher vertical jump. So we just showed you two different paths to reach the same goal. He likes the ATG split squat, I like single leg squats on a slanted board, but they have common denominators. Both of them share full knee bend, okay? We know that you need full knee bend to strengthen your knees as much as possible. Both of these are single leg dominant exercises, and both of these exercises are going to help you get stronger knees and a higher vertical jump. Now that we have all of this information that we've given you this whole video, now let's learn how to plug it into our own programming so that you can take this, take action on it, and get stronger knees and a higher vertical jump yourself. So here's our schedule. We got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You're going to choose one day per week to do ATG split squats. Then you're going to rest a few days and then choose one day per week to do single leg squats on a slanted board. So each of these exercises, you're only doing once per week. So for example, let's say on Monday, we want to do ATG split squats. So ATG split squats on Monday, then we want to rest a few days and then we would do one leg squats on Friday. Excuse my handwriting. So a few rest days in between, once per week ATG split squats, once per week one leg squats on a slanted board. For the sets and rep ranges, for ATG split squats, knees over toes guy said that he likes to do five sets of 10. He's tested a lot of different rep ranges out, but he said, I'm sorry, 10 sets of five. 10 sets of five reps. You start with body weight and then you slowly progressive overload. For me, and remember, this is after you've progressed to the point where you can do full range of motion, single leg squats on a slanted board. First, you start with two legs. Then you move to one leg, you only go down six inches. Then you go down to parallel. When you can do full range of motion, I like you to go to failure for three or four sets. So three or four sets to failure. 
okay? So do your weak leg first. Always do your weak leg first on any single leg exercises. As many reps as you can get, you're going to failure. Then with your strong leg, because it is stronger, you can probably get more reps. You're going to stop at the same amount of reps that you got with your weak leg. So let's say I do my right leg first because it is weaker. Let's say I get eight reps of single leg squats. Then I want to do my left leg. I'm only going to eight reps because I want them to be equal. We don't want any imbalances. So Monday, ATG split squats, 10 sets of five, start with body weight, then slowly progressive overload, no more than five or 10 pounds each week. For me, same thing, go from two legs to one leg. Once you can do one leg, three or four sets to failure, then add five pounds, then add 10 pounds, then add 15 pounds, five pounds per week and progressive overload from there. Anyways, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this collaboration between myself and Knees Over Toes Guy. We had a lot of fun making it. We really hope that you got some valuable information that you can actually take and implement into your own workout schedule to get strong knees in a high vertical jump because that was the whole point of this video in the first place. We wanted to come together to give you something valuable that would benefit you and help you achieve your goals. So hopefully we did that. And this is not going to be the last collaboration between myself and Knees Over Toes Guy. So hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. Also, make sure you follow Knees Over Toes Guy on Instagram. His Instagram is a complete goldmine for athletes. If you follow me on Instagram at Nathaniel Morton and you tag three friends on any one of my posts, I will send you a free weight training vertical jump training program. And if you comment jump down below in the comment section of this video, I will send you a free body weight vertical jump training program. Both of those programs are completely free, no strings attached. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell if you have not already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Video. Young visionary and I don't know where I am I'm running blindfolded like I ain't got a